Lecture 13, Inventory Management. There's different types of inventory. The first is raw materials, purchase parts, things that are going into what you're going to do. There's work in process. So like if you're assembling a chair, all of those parts, even though they're not worth anything, they're work in process. So that's inventory. Finished goods, inventories, or merchandise. So you have the chair built and it goes into the warehouse. That's, that's inventory. Tools and supplies. So some tools may be used over and over again. Some of them may be disposable. Supplies, the same thing. You, you, your supplies, you have an inventory of towels, you have an inventory of glue, whatever it is, nails, whatever it is that you, you have. And then maintenance and repair inventory. So you have some machinery, you might have some spare parts for your machinery in inventory. And then goods in transit to warehouses or customers. This is called pipeline inventory. So the objective of inventory control is two things. First is customer service. So you want to have the right goods in the right quantity in the right place at the right time. The second is the cost of ordering and carrying inventories. So you want that overall objective of maintaining inventory for your customer service but keep the inventory cost within reasonable bounds. So you can um, have measures of performance, customer satisfaction, uh, and you know with customer satisfaction you can count the number and quantity of back orders, you can count customer complaints, and then you can also measure inventory turnover. Inventory counting system. So one is a periodic system where you physically count items in an inventory made at per periodic inventory. Another is a perpetual inventory system. This keeps track of items from inventory continuously. So as they're used, they're monitored. Uh, so and then at a certain place in the inventory, uh, at a pre predetermined minimum level, you make an order. There's a concept also where you don't have to count, which is a two bin system. So you have two containers of inventory, and when the first one is empty, you reorder. I use the two, two bin system for my shampoo. I have a shampoo that I like. I have one shampoo in the shower that's being used, and then I have a second one in the medicine cabinet that's brand new. As soon as I run out in the shower, I take the one out of the med medicine cabinet and I add shampoo to my shopping list. I do the same thing with deodorant, with soap. We do that with our laundry detergent. There's a lot of things that we use a two bin system where uh, even our vitamins will have one that is open and then one that as soon as I, I use up the open one and take it out, it goes on the, the list. Some people have the strategy of if you buy enough of it, you never run out. So they'll go to Costco, buy a great big bottle of shampoo. The problem is at some point you're going to run out of shampoo so what's your mechanism to count? I, I prefer the two bottle system. Inventory counting technologies. Universal product code, you see that the barcode uh, on anything you buy it has that bar barcode. So it's a number and that number is attached to a product. So when, when someone wants to sell something they get a number assigned and then that number goes into the database and you know that that product is that number. The second is something called an RFID and it, it uses radio waves to identify 
objects. So uh, one example, if you have sort of a card reader for, like sometimes you go to a hotel and you hold the card up to the door or a bar, well, if, you, if it's a barcode, that's a magnetic reader, but some of them, the more expensive ones where you just hold the card up and you don't actually swipe it, just hold it up, that's an R RFID. Um, you can also have RFIDs inside of your clothing. You can, there's RFIDs, you can use it for inventory management. So there's a lot of different different frequencies of RFIDs. Uh, there's short short range where you actually have to be within uh, like a half an inch or a quarter of an inch of the reader. There's the the bigger ones where you could go to a C container, open up the C container, and scan the entire C container, and you would get all the RFID tags in that whole C container. So you could take an inventory just just by scanning that whole thing. You could you could have uh, RFID on all of your test equipment. You could go into a lab and just scan around the room and get an inventory of all the equipment in that room. Inventory cycle. So here is on this axis is the quantity on hand. Here's your usage rate. And what you want is you want your reorder point to be, if, if this is how long it takes to get it, you want to put it, you want to place the order right here so it comes right when you run out. So here's a, a profile of an inventory over time. You order it, it comes in, uh, you get the inventory, you come down here, you order it. So this is the reorder point right here. So you're always ordering right here. So the total cost minimization. So there's ordering costs and holding costs. And so you can calculate the, the ordering costs, you can calculate the holding costs, and you want to keep that minimum. Sometimes if you're you're ordering getting a whole C container of something or a whole truck full of something you get better discounts or maybe get a pallet instead of uh, a box and and that's a trade-off between how much does it cost you to store it how much does it cost you how much are you saving to order in that larger quantity so then you have uh, the reorder point um, that's your uncertainty. So sometimes your lead time or your demand time has uncertainty. So, so to reduce the lock likelihood of stock out, it becomes necessary to carry a safety stock. So a safety stock is intentional excess inventory held in the expectation either due to variable demand or variable lead time. So your reorder uh, point with a safety stock is expected demand during lead time plus your safety stock. So here you have it graphically. So here your inventory is coming down and here's your reorder point and then here this is your maximum probable demand during the lead time. So there's a possibility you could use all of this. And so then that becomes your safety stock. Or if your lead time has a variable time, uh, it could go, come out to here, then you, you, you need safety stock for your variable lead time. So summary, we've talked about the types of inventory, the objectives of in inventory control. There's a couple of inventory counting systems, the periodic system and the perpetual system. The technologies for inventory counting, universal product code and RFIDs. Uh, the inventory cycle, the total cost minimization, and then the reorder point.